I'm back with an update to let y'all know what has been going on. I don't even know where to start. Honestly, I really don't because my life has been a whirlwind. I've been trying my hardest to just stay composed, stay decompressed. Woo-sa! Give it to God. And was looking at because he came through the back, he right? Yeah, he always go through the patio, but you're like right here, right? Yeah, and, he, and see, he yep. goes to that one on the end. So yeah, he that was him. That was him. He probably thought no, to see. She just want an incident report done, just in case, like she said, she got to protect her. Yeah. Thing. Oh yeah, because he just saw her standing out there. Before. Yes, he been watching he, me. Yes. I know who you talking about. Oh that my. I'm always and then something just touched me, and it was like Linda share your story because. Your story is going to help someone. Whenever they need to see it, whenever they need to hear it, whenever they need to think about it, your video will be here. So here I am, I'm just sharing my story, what's been going on life at the moment. Momentarily, mentally, I'm okay. I'm withstanding the best way that I can in the best way that I know how. I am currently just getting over the fact that this past weekend, a man who's unfamiliar to me, because the first thing when you say somebody is literally trying to break into your apartment, they always think you're out here full out lying around with so many different damn people or you're pissing different men off. I'm not pissing nobody off because I'm not fooling with nobody. I'm not the type of woman to place myself in a position to be dealing with somebody locally or even out of the city out of my area who can't function mentally and emotionally without feeling like they have to step to me and cause harm to me or my children to prove a point about how they feel about me and about what we went through i'm not in that area of my life i know some women they end up literally just saying oh my god i didn't see the signs right now i'm in a place in my life to where everything is being watched and everybody is being watched carefully. Everybody is under the microscope when it comes down to, especially with dating, it's really under the microscope because I'm not dating. I haven't been out on a date in months. And as we're going into the month of September, I can definitely stand on that. Um, of September, 2024, I'm chilling, I'm good, I'm straight. You know, I'm just taking care of me and mine. And that's just real talk. If it was different, I ain't got nobody to come on here and lie to. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody paying my bills. Ain't nobody keeping a roof over my head. Ain't nobody funding nothing for me to come on here and lie to y'all about what I got going on in my love life. Love life is dry. Sierra. Sierra doesn't dry. That's just the reality of it all. So Saturday, I was working from home. This is when everything took place. And... I was just chilling you know I, I literally was kind of shooken up because Friday was kind of shaky for me and I came into Saturday like why do I feel so uneasy like what is going on so I had to wake up around 5 actually I was up at like 4 45 um, just journaling giving myself some time to just boost out before my shift started for 6 a.m. And I was only working till uh, lunchtime, so it wasn't gonna be a long shift, but I had to literally work Saturday morning. So my kids, they ended up jumping up and they wanted to wake up early with me. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna make y'all some breakfast and y'all gonna be up until y'all wanna go back to bed. You know, so I was enforcing them back to sleep. So around seven o'clock, I was already sitting at my computer because I work from home on my shift. I heard my kids in the room say, saying, who is that? Who is that? And I can hear a tapping on the glass, which is my patio glass. It's a sliding door. And both of my kids, their beds are in front of the sliding door. So the way my apartment is set up, because we're in a one bed apart bedroom apartment, I can hear everything. You know what I'm saying? Even if I'm not trying to hear it, 
if they're if my kids are not whispering i can hear so and then i wasn't even on a call so i was just all ears and i just hear somebody trying to get my kids attention my kids sound like they're just you know they're getting a little frustrated or whatever the case may be and i heard my son saying come on lena come on and so it was a man i opened up my door because my son came peep at the door and um he was like come on lena he and he opened up the door he came out alina coming out and so um i'm looking and i see a man literally at the glass with his hands planted upon the glass staring into my apartment and literally trying to get my daughter's attention like literally talking to my daughter through the glass and then um my son he went back to the bed because my daughter bed is right next to his to try to get her attention to tell her come on let's go because the man was trying to convince eli at one point to open the door he was trying to tell eli to open up the patio door and he was like man come on man open up open up the door i'm trying to get to your mom i'm trying to get to your effing mom and so i was like what the fuck so i literally had my headset on i took my headset off I went in break mode and I was like, y'all come on out of there. Come on out of there. Eli and Alina both came running on out of there. And so I went to my window and I was like, I, I, I said, stay your ass right there. I, I said, I'm coming right back. I got something for you. I got something for you. So the man literally was pulling at the door, pulling at my patio door, trying to get in. I, first thing on my mind, I'm in survival mode. I'm not calling 911. I have to defend what's mine. The police ain't about to make it over here in time enough to be able to protect us because we don't, we don't, we would have been and ran on out of the apartment. You know what I'm saying? So I ran up the hill. I get to grabbing up in my apartment and I grab the first, the first knife I can grab just like this. I grab the first knife out of my little dishes over here that I be washing every day because I'm always cooking something. I just grabbed the first knife and I went running my ass back on in there because it was going to be some problems. It was going to be some problems. I was going to butcher his ass on up. Butcher his ass up. Filet mignon. I didn't care. Like, it was going down. And so, by the time I went to running my ass back to the room, which was quick, that, that guy had hurry up. He stopped pulling on the door when he saw I was running back with a fucking knife back there. I hate the cuss, but he saw me running back there with a knife. He went and hurry up and ran. He hurried up and ran through my um my little gate back there because I have a gate protecting my little patio door. He went running through the gate and went hard and hurry and closed the gate up. I'm like, what? I don't know what he went to run and I wasn't about to go and chase him with the knife and look even more psychotic. You know, because my kids, they never seen me literally go in straight Xena mode, warrior princess. <laughs> you know, if I could have threw this thing like a boomerang and it would have went through the through the uh, plexiglass glass and would have came back, baby, I would have been like, that's what I'm talking about. Because that's just how I felt. You know, like I was really in a moment of, I got to protect myself, I got to protect my kids. Because if he pull on this door hard enough and this door come open, it's me or him. Ain't no calling on 911. And somebody come lunging and jumping on me. I got to be able to do something. I wasn't worried about grabbing my phone to call 911. I'm all my kids got. I got to defend. It was either going to pull a knife out or we going to run through the front door and we going to run all the way up the street. And we live on a busy a busy highway. So everybody would have been seeing and would have been like, what's going on over there? We was going to run out of here barefoot if I wouldn't have came in here and got a knife. That's what I'm just telling you. So I was just shooken up. I was so scared. I was so nervous. Because of course I ain't never judge nobody up. I ain't never, I ain't never, you know, I could do a mean, a mean filet. I could clean some chicken and I could clean some fish really good. But to literally judge somebody up, oh, that's not my ministry. But it, uh, I was gonna lay him out. Roll kill back up. I was gonna lay him out. Oh, he was gonna be laid out. And the the scariest part of it with that, he was literally holding himself like trying to get into my apartment holding himself and i was thinking baby i'm gonna slice your meat off and it's gonna be looking like a worm out the dirt because i'm gonna put you down like i literally i was seeing ray and then i had to get back on the clock i didn't go over my break time didn't go over my break time and i just literally just got back on the clock nerves was just shook up still had to take calls and i know that my qa probably was just 
but we ain't gonna speak on it. You know, I'm just gonna say, give it the, I'm just giving it to God that my QA did not suffer from all of that because I was really shooken up and still had to get on the clock and work. Like, how my supervisor gonna believe this done happened in, in all less than 10 minutes? You know what I'm saying? Less than 10 minutes, it was probably about a good seven, eight minutes of, of, of action. You know what I'm saying? It, that's what it felt like because I didn't have a 10 minute full break, but it literally was just a lot and just to get my kids to calm down and to get myself situated at the same time. It was a lot. And that Saturday was supposed to be the weekend that the ex-husband was supposed to bring his stuff down, down here and pick up the kids. He had me on block, no call, no show. And I'm just like, why are you doing this to me? And I'm over here literally having to protect our kids. I'm having to protect myself as well. Because if anything happened to me, God forbid, you have to play the role of a full-time parent because you don't want to come out here and be a, you don't want to be a part-time one. So God forbid anything ever happened to me and he over here hating my guts. What You going to really have to turn suffering like that? You don't want to be part-time and something happened to me. You have no other option but to be full-time. I had the opportunity to just woo side and let it go. But when I tell you, I was just in here just like, dude, he could have came and got the kids and, and my kids wouldn't even have to see all of it. But meanwhile, my kids have to see that. My son got to be worrying, my daughter worrying. And then it hit me and it made me so emotional my daughter was just like what daddy do what daddy gonna do and i'm just like baby he out of sight he out of mind he don't care anything could have happened over here police got called or whatever the case could have been he wouldn't care as long as he paid his child support he don't care and it just hurt me all over i just i ain't told her that i was just like baby he's just not worried about you and your brother right now he's not worried about y'all he's really not because they know they, they knew he was supposed to come and pick him up this weekend they had their clothes laid out on their bed on their bed daddy coming daddy coming another disappointment i said i'm tired you know what i'm saying i'm just tired at this point all i could do is just throw my hands up because after all that I go through, I don't text, I don't ask, I don't bother, I don't even reach out and tell a man nothing. The all I just be wanting, it would be nice for a man to just have some reciprocation knowing that I'm over here doing everything for the kids by myself. And I shouldn't have to if we have joint custody, legalized joint custody. And just spending two days out of the month and only stay like an hour away. It's just so tough because he has another child and he's saying that that other child come first. But people over here stalking out me and I'm over here having to take care of the kids on my own. Least a person like that can do is just say, you know what? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm come and get them, you know, try to get you a try to you know try to get you a, a little gun and go get you a registered license or something when i come in when i come and get the kids something he ain't gonna bring his ass down here and protect them he can't even come down here and have fun with them he can't even come down here and literally bond with them he went the whole month of august without seeing the kids whole month of july without even paying child support like, I just have been in a, in a whole dilemma of what's next? I'm ready. I got my dukes up. Like, I really have been going through it. And still in all, I find a way to smile. I find a way to be optimistic because I know that this is not going to weaken me as much as it's being thrown at me. The more that the obstacles are thrown at me, I'm just up here like, okay, let's come up with a reason as to how we're gonna continuously deal with different things that come and how I can continue to pray and manifest and just be more acceptable and ready for better. And that's where I'm at. And I haven't been dating, so to say, because I'm in a situation of, I gotta pay for a sitter to get on out of the house. You know what I'm saying? I got to. This is just reality. 
And in my type of situation, I did want to tell y'all that the ex-husband make it so difficult for me to get time to have to myself that I don't have to dig in my pocket for. Like he really wants for me to fall. And if I fall, the kids fall, and God forbid, what happens after that? That's what he wants. That's his grand theory of things. And so it's just so heartbreaking because I sit over here and I tell myself, Linda, when you get through this, and when you see that light all the way at the end of the tunnel, it's going to be worth it. And I go hard. I People, why you do what you do? Why you be up there, you know, working and doing all of this, working the nine to five to take care of your kids? Because I ain't got no choice. And half of the stuff that I do, I do it out of spite because I know they want me to fail. I know they don't want to see me happy. I know they don't like me. I know they up there like, how she do it? How she doing it? How she surviving by the grace of God? I'm surviving. And like I told y'all in the beginning, I'm not about to let nobody ring me off and put me in a position of where I'm in a crippling situation and they talking about, oh, I break your lease and all that. Well, what money? What economy y'all living in? Where am I going to go? How am I supposed to pack up this whole apartment? Who going to pay for the movers? Which I mean, move tomorrow, next week, or next month. Like, it's just, it's like, come on. Yeah, easily said and done when you have somebody to help you, if that's the case. But I mean, I'm just saying, at this point in the game, I'm out here and I'm going to fight. I if, I, if I don't know how to do nothing else, you know, I know how to survive. I know how to survive and I'm going to grind and I'm going to get it. So that's the end of this video if you have questions comments or concerns drop that in the comment box below i would love to talk to you and until the next video my baby whew, i gotta go i gotta leave so please don't make it hard for me yeah i'm i'm going to take a bed that's how i'm going i'll talk to you in the next video because you know i got some more to talk about all right